Hello and welcome to Musings with Morales. I am producer Paco, sitting in for Morales, who right now is in the Czech Republic and the Netherlands and somewhere in between. Background story, our fearless host, aside from being a podcast host, is also an entrepreneur and is the owner of a bunch of businesses, including Dialysis Education Services. And part of his trip is to speak with different business owners in the hopes of expanding awareness with regard to kidney disease as well as promoting good health. Here are some footages of his trip in the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. And we hope that you like those footages. Now, in lieu of an episode wherein Morales speaks with a guest, we're turning the tables around because we knew for a fact that he wouldn't be able to do the podcast episode for this week. However, we made sure that content gets delivered to our community every Monday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific. That way you can start the week with inspiration, with knowledge, and with everything in between. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our host, Morales. But this time around, I get to do the interview and we find out more about the man behind the podcast. So here's Morales. Uh, in my head through life, of, like I said, times where I was annoyed from like so many reminders of you, you or maybe like bringing a thir second, third really? plane, yeah. you know, like yeah. wanting, wanting to like... I guess clean the whole buffet or whatever. There's yeah. more, Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and and then also taking food home. Yes, that was the that was the other one that really surprised me. Is like you're supposed to take yes. the food home and like you're like the, it, it shows that you love it. But but you, <laughs> you know it's funny. Also, it's like on the other end, it's like I'm like oh shit, they're here. They're gonna take food home. And certain <laughs> people in the fact like they're gonna before the party's over, they're gonna take food home. Right. right? I'm like I I remember that used to annoy me, but now I'm like okay. it's, it's Culture, right? You're listening to Musings with Morales. Brought to you by Dialysis Education Services. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, my good friend, proud to have him here, Mr. Mike Morales. What's up? What's up, Paco? Finally, yeah? Huh? Yeah, it's been a... More than a decade. A, a lot of talk, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 but but then again, when we start, when we started, it was a different house, and we were what twenty pounds uh, lighter, right? Combined? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, each? No, for sure, no. for sure. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah, I was probably about that, maybe a little more than twenty pounds lighter. lighter. Yeah, and uh, probably like more. More hair. More hair than I have now. Yeah. But then again, you're just shaving it. Eh? I was I've always been shaving it and it's like uh, it, since I was 19 I've shaved my head by choice and then at some point I was like maybe I tried and I was like oh shit like I don't have any I don't have any hair <laughs> or it's yeah it, it, it most of it disappeared okay Stress. so <laughs> so with regard to, with regard to that no with regard to hair and everything else and youth we've gone a long way the reason why we became friends was because you were starting a school yeah. That was dialysis education services. Let's um, go through all those talking points now because um, I want to I wanna be able to unpack um, these things about you because whoever's listening there may see you as an opportunity to change their lives. But it changed your life also when you started dialysis education services. It did. Uh, and, and it's kind of, no, 15 years, 15 years. Since we started the the business dialysis education services, and I guess some of the players have changed, but the 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 purpose, the the end result, you know, in who we're helping people who have kidney failure or kidney diseases, and improving the care that they get, uh, maybe the delivery method, some of the perspective and approach on how we do it has changed, and and some of the end result has changed as well. It's not just in the delivery of the care, but maybe even the need for care mm -hmm. in providing more education to uh, just putting out more information, more content in a way that people 
who are not aware of kidney disease are now aware of it, are thinking of it, uh, are taking steps to find out, you know, about their own health, change their trajectory, things like this. So yeah, a, a, a lot has changed, but when, when we started out, it was, uh, you know, the desire to, like I said, to change or improve the way care was delivered. Right. I, I was a dialysis technician uh, for most of my young adult life, and I felt like I delivered care in a way that was, I just connected well with people. Mm. Uh, they tend to open up to me, uh, trust in me, maybe sometimes more than I deserve. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like as a dialysis tech, and this would refer or, or uh, resonate with a lot of people out there who are dialysis techs, the patients would ask me things or ask me about things that somebody who had been educated for, you know, they have a master's degree like in social work or right. uh, in nutrition. They just gave them advice and then they go like, hey, what do you think? And <laughs> I was a dialysis tech. You know, I went through a school that was like four months long for that specific yeah. specialty. Uh, and I, I was like, I thought like, you know, why, why did they ask me? <laughs> uh, when somebody who, like I said, has that much education under the belt just got done telling them they got a license, they've got this education behind them, but they're asking me as the, like the trust. Um, so I wanted, <clears throat> when I started that business, I wanted to touch more than 12 people's life a day, I guess, uh, which was what I was doing as a dialysis tech. I had right. four patients three times a, a day, three shifts of that, right? And uh, I felt like teaching or training people was a way to, if I teach you, then you touch 12 people. And if I touch, you know, train somebody else, they touch 12. And, you know, I, now Using I- Using your methodology <clears throat> or your, well, maybe <clears throat> your tenets, right? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, I didn't create anything new. Uh, I gave a level of passion, hopefully, that, is carrying over to the people that we work with maybe paved a bit of a way mm. for dialysis techs to kind of like dream big and and go like uh okay I, I did four months of school or six months or a year of school whatever it is to be this entry-level healthcare professional right you know morales did the same thing right and he opened a business you know he's helped other businesses to open I hope this would be like a legacy for me is that, uh, you know, he left a mark um, beyond, you know, just moments, but right. something that is like added to a workforce, added to a, a like you said, a methodology. If, if, if I can yeah. coin that one day, I'm not sure if I can, but uh, I, I think that, you know, since the time we've known each other, it's not been a purposeful uh, branding of that business like always it, it's you know we've went through different exercises um and different marketing groups and different ads and and actually you helped us with right. all of our original stuff and we've kind of evolved 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 like i don't know how many times now right but what we've seen is like a very similar essence to to the brand and it, it, it kind of goes back to the way that people will deliver care uh, I, th I think we're doing it now after 15 years with enough people that there's a, a culture behind it. Uh, we're seeing people who started with us turn into nurses, turn into nurse practitioners, turn into to physicians, uh, open businesses, uh, write books, mm. <laughs> you know, things like that. So, so that, it's exciting. Was it exciting or was it, was it scary? Because you were young when you started it. It's both. It's exciting and scary, and, and maybe that's you know scary is probably exciting, right? Like that's why you go to amusement park. Right? <laughs> but uh, when I started that, which was my first business, I had three kids. Right. Three kids at the time. So uh, I, I guess the the exciting part of it is like you know <laughs> maybe originally like oh I don't have a boss and I'm gonna work for myself. And maybe there's no glass ceiling, right? Like I can go as, as far high as, as yeah. Nobody's gonna to tell me this is it, right? When did you come face to face with the realization with regard to everything that you had in your mind, all the perceptions that you had in your mind? There, there have been times that I've thought over the last fifteen years, like I should have stayed an employee. <laughs> you know, like okay, you just you just know, and, and 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 it's not because of security, to tell you the truth. The, the reasons I thought that was because 
well, when the day's over, the day's over. Uh, and like, I don't, you know. I you're not responsible for anybody except your family. Pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> I can remember that as a young man, like, you know, end of the day, being able to just, a weekend, you know, just being able to check out and like, I'm going to go do this. And like, even during the week, maybe <laughs> being able to check out. Right. But as a business owner, it's like, it is 168 a week, you know, 168 hours a week. Like you, you wake up and you go to, go to bed. At least I do. Right. I'm, I, I think that, you know, there's a happy, uh, and healthy way to go about being a business owner, but the the realization of like you get what you put in uh, was pretty pretty quick to me. Now that's not going to be everybody's experience mm. as a business owner, right? Because uh, there are people out there who make one post and they make more right. money than right I'll probably ever make, right? But you know, what? let's uh, let's debunk that because that one post. Before that person ever reached that kind of status, imagine the dues paying that they had to do yeah. prior to getting to that plateau. If we if we could call it a plateau, what's your take? Yeah, I don't know, and uh, I think there's certain level of dues, and like you know, I recently started a podcast also. Yeah, we're gonna producer, talk right? about that. Yeah, music so with one eye. Thinking about do you know <clears throat> dues? Like you know, we've created a small community together, right? Mm -hmm. And um we have topics that are they're right in line with what we're talking about the school there yeah but it it we're now uh four months into it yeah and we've we've stayed consistent with weekly yep uh, contributions Episodes. right mm -hmm. and our our community is not two million right not yet it, well and and i hope one day we'll we'll be there i i, I actually think we will yes um, amen but but what i'm saying is like i think there are people that probably on day number one based off of what they're talking about and how trendy it is, which the thing that I talk about most of the time is not very trendy. It's thing that people don't talk about. And then when they do, they go like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> you know, I got something that actually puts me at risk for kidney disease. Right. Or, uh, Oh, <laughs> my mom told me about uncle so-and-so who was on dialysis. I didn't even know what the hell that was. Now I know what it is and why you get there. And like, I'm in line. See what you did like, to me. I wasn't <laughs> pointing it out. But <laughs> That's, that, I was like, every time I go home from, from our um, taping sessions, I, I tell Janelle, shit. I think the reason my back is my lower back is aching is because I have I have CKD I have kidney disease. But did you ever picture yourself being a podcast host? No, no, never for sure. Uh, so if we went all the way back, I, I just wanted to multiply myself by a local level, and I, I think you know what starting a business has done for me is really open that up to like dream, dream bigger. Um, and then in that, like seeing all the things that we realized over the years right. is in relation to being a podcaster, you told me uh, it, at more than 10, I don't think day number one, but it was pretty early. Probably, yeah. It was pretty early on. Cause I yes. remember it was like, at some point you told me like how you were using YouTube personally. Yeah. And it was like, you got to do this. And, and it was basically podcasting, but like on a personal, yes, on, on a personal level. So, um, no, I never thought that I would be doing podcasting, but it's, it goes back to the same thing is I thought I wanted to, or I just wanted to multiply myself. Right. And not that I'm somebody to multiply because there are a million, a million things that I should not multiply <laughs> right? about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But, but in, in regard to the, the thing that I, I do feel confident that I would want to multiply is like the, the way that I um, deliver care to people uh, when it comes to somebody who has chronic illness, who's scared, who's in pain, who's frustrated. And it's not just chronic illness. I mean, from dialysis, since we've known each other as well, like it's evolved into other things. Mm. It started with dialysis for me as a dialysis tech but i actually ran a nursing home and that level of connection was the same thing there where uh 
you know, one dealing with staff as an administrator of right. a nursing home with multiple disciplines, right? Yes. Because nursing home have like kitchen, they yeah. have they have social work, they have uh the, patient the care records, they have, you know, all the clinical yeah. levels from CNA to license have- pharmacy. Like it's it's a very complex and it's a mini hospital, right? So that, but then it's twenty four hours a day home for people and then the people who love them go in there, right? So yes. they come in all frustrated, um, scared, uh, sometimes financially impacted. And, and all those years of working with dialysis patients actually really helped me in, I think, being able to kind of, you hear gunshots, but you don't flinch. Yes. That type of thing. Uh, so in other words, you're not desensitized, but it's normalized you to pangs of anxiety from other people. Oh, yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, you know, and, and that could go into like personality and things like that for me, but like have a high level of anxiety when right. things are not going on. <laughs> when yeah. things are going on. You're like, oh, this is my world. I seem to be the, <clears throat> the I calm seem one. To, exactly. But I'm not a calm person a, at all. Uh could it Not be think about it when things are quiet the normal reaction is hmm, let's all stay quiet things are quiet mm. could it be you're the opposite when things are quiet <clears throat> your brain goes something's not right uh, I, I would say historically for me when things are quiet like yeah just <laughs> it's not it's not a good scene you know what I mean uh, it, it's it's good for me to stay consumed and you know starting a business keeps you consumed right and 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 i'll say that's been good for me as a man to own a business because if i were left to my own devices yeah uh i think many of us can say this like i didn't think i'd ever be this old wow (laughs) right for for sure so so in other words it it um Owning a business forced you to stay on the straight and narrow. I mean, you'd veer once in a while because we're yep. men. Yep. But you know, default. This is where it, this is where I should be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, a sense of decency when you have like a client-facing, right. customer-facing type of business, and and with what I've done since the time I started a business and before is in training people how to care for somebody else like yeah you really have to have mm. uh like a conscious control like what what's the you know maybe not what's the single line but what are the parameters what's what are the edges y- yeah, yeah how far can i veer right yeah how far can i veer left yeah that's right before i i, I fall off the edge and and ruin whatever yeah how important is it to have someone like cat Oh, uh, in your life, let's say, so on, on the same level, leave a, leave a man to himself Mm -hmm. and like, you know, he'll jump off bridges and do a lot of crazy stuff. Right. And, uh, cat is a a person that is like, you know, be you, but also understand that, you know, I need you. And so does, so do these other people. Right. Right. Oh yeah. The, The kids. Right. Uh, so she's kind of keeps that good, uh, just a good check, you know, checks and balances. Um, also when you, when you talk about like somebody supporting, right. And, and this might open up another dialogue for us, but, uh, I think we talked to somebody together that said like their parents didn't say they love them right, right. and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. things like this. Right. But <clears throat> now when you think about like, somebody supporting you as a, a business owner, right? Like <clears throat> that's, that takes a lot. I, I think maybe sometimes more as far as the gut than the business, the one who's like the business owner. If, you know, when you're married, it's a partnership, but yes. like when you talk about like starting a business, who, who's the, the subject matter, the operator, like th- that, that's me in this relationship. Right. And I, I think, it's kind of like sitting in a car and somebody else is driving and if you don't like the way they're driving well you know shut the fuck up right exactly <laughs> like or be a backseat driver right but um 
so so having somebody that is willing to get in the car <laughs> and, and and ride over and over and over uh through starting a business and then you say because like, she was there like yeah. when i met you i met cat i met i met both of you together yep and 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 like we, we didn't have like it was a dream it, we at that point. Yeah. yeah we had what we had yeah like which was not much you know at the time and not to say we're like abundant or or living in um excess now but like we really didn't have anything at the mm -hmm. time so like that's one thing and then like you say like starting a business and is it scary is it exciting uh well, like, can you imagine like she's a stay at home well okay leave your your job and you know you're gonna start a business and then she, i think that's a lot of trust like i said so it's kind of like yeah um maybe it's more for that the other person who's supporting the one who's like in the trenches with the business or maybe it's a deeper trench when they're not able to really they're not in control of the car but they're in in the they're car. in it with you yeah. yeah i'll go where you go yeah so yeah. she so basically cat 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 is your ride or die oh yeah 100 percent. and besides business right. you know there's we call the whole thing a car ride you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, uh yeah she's you know she's stayed in the car yeah. um on some pretty treacherous roads so okay podcast po podcast host and uh business owner when when you pivoted to doing a podcast when you wanted to do this i really played hard to get with you to see how serious you were in doing this because mm -hmm. i'm like is he really finally going to do it and me being behind the scenes on your podcast, I'm very proud of you because I'm like, we're doing long form podcasts. <laughs> and there are times when you're off script. Most of the times now, I'm, I'm liking the fact that your outline is now becoming mental as opposed to yeah. to written down. But yeah. when we began, like you would tell me, we do this in the beginning then we have this 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 and now it's like there you go i had it's, the minutes too <laughs> right yeah. now it's like free flowing and it's flowing mm. how do where do you see your podcast going and are you going to give it the same steam that you gave your school so for the the first question um where do i see it going so i think it's a similar i think it's a good comparison uh like same steam as the school and like you say you know you played some hard to get and yeah like okay it's test the water is, is he really gonna do it like like i don't really do it unless i'm gonna do it you know what i mean like that's just like, i don't really believe in like just try it out you know uh just give a half ass right and we talked about like cadence of you know how often we're gonna do yeah. it and you had kind of a, a an aggressive mm -hmm. uh thought on, i i couldn't you know i couldn't do more than once a week and even once a week is sometimes hard because i have right. like multiple multiple hats right but <clears throat> uh so i would say as far as the the level of commitment same level of commitment is there uh and it's the it's the same general purpose of you know highlighting kidney disease but i think all the things I talked about, you know, starting a business, right? Uh, a, a dialysis tech or a CNA or an MA, somebody that's like entry level, <clears throat> uh, staying that because I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor. I, I did get a couple of degrees in like business and then uh, health admin and mm -hmm. education. After I was a dialysis tech, I stayed a dialysis tech. I'm still a dialysis tech. Uh, so maybe like stories of just kind of professional growth. Uh, help people to to find find their way by not really knowing right not really knowing their way i guess because uh you know the, door, the the opportunities open when you go through one door right like we open one then 15 15 other open so where do i see the podcast going yeah where you know i think you know we, we talked about like okay uh, some exposure um uh, some suggestion into into people mixed in with some fun and you know in inspiring stories but some sug suggestion that would impact community uh 
I think we're building our own mm. right now. Solid. So like if we were to say like the, the, the science of like compounding, you know, one person and then, you know, the whole house yeah. now knows a little bit more, you know, where do I see it? I don't know that I'll see it. Like, but somebody's going to not get diabetes or is going to come out of pre-diabetes or, you know, lose some weight like I'm consciously trying to do right now. Right. And, it, and it like gets harder and harder. Um, blood pressure, start managing their blood pressure, check for kidney disease, what, whatever it is. But like some actual tangible, but maybe things that I won't see mm. um, individual results in people. Um, with that, I think, and, and I'm seeing it already, that there's enough of a community development that um, we will take on different sort of partners um, through the podcast of groups that have similar interests. Um, it's like people in healthcare, uh, it's med device, uh, it's entrepreneurs of like new startups. So since I started this school, I've also yeah. gone into a couple other um, businesses as well. Some that have, you know, failed miserably, some that um, have had to dissolve and others that, you know, have yet to be. <laughs> but you know what, that wasn't the plan. No, it wasn't. Remember when we were doing pre-production of music? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna separate it. We're gonna we're gonna create a different entity. Yeah. And then as we're moving along, the reason why I'm so fascinated is because there's that covalent bonding going <laughs> without even trying. Mm. It's like, oh my God, we're niching into the same space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, a, a noble space, and it is. It's a a space that doesn't lock into like, and, and maybe, you know, maybe any cause doesn't really lock in as long as you, if you think about any like chronic illness or any sort of like, we're not a non-for-profit, but think about non-for-profit causes, right? Um, different sorts of cancers yeah. and um, different sorts of mental illness and, and disabilities and things like this, right? It's part of life. So, it's it's okay to talk about these things in other conversations and we should it it doesn't have to be like well hey let's let's sit down and talk about kidney disease right uh like we can talk about a lot of things we can have meals you can tell me hey mike you know like you gotta drop some weight you know get back to where when we met right <laughs> <laughs> you can it, it's okay right and yeah. one of one of our friends dominique actually yeah. said like when you when you see things like you should say things yes. right like when when you see people on a certain trajectory like we should be able to talk about that right and it's like maybe it's up i don't know maybe it's at the golf course like you know some of our other friends cuz cuz that's our moral obligation as friends yeah yeah or else what kind of friends are we if we're going to let them yeah fall off the deep end yeah, it's like you got a booger on, yeah. you know like come on or a tell, spinach on your yeah tell me man like you know tell me what's up right so yes. i i I, I, I think, you know, we're really looking to develop that community where, like you said, it's okay. It's, it's, it's the friendly thing to do. Yeah. Uh, to talk about the things that we don't want to talk about. And chronic kidney disease is one of them. But if we say, you know, from a, a health perspective, you can then go into like, you know, diet and diabetes and diet and hypertension and just diet as a whole because obesity is also a factor. We can go into talking about longevity and being a, what a centurion and yes you know all oh, these yeah. sort of things because uh you know chronic illness kills us right kills how about us this faster. is it possible that the reason why and I'm, I'm gonna say this uh as aggressive as you are when it comes to business you're a, you're you're a very very results i'm sorry you're a very very results driven person mm. when it comes to business but could it be when it comes to your health because you are exposed to the healthcare community, mm. you have the mentality of, uh, I'll do it later. I'll oh, yeah. Later. But I mean, all the things that we talk about um, in the Musings podcast, as far as like stereotypes that are not just stereotypes, but they're actually cultural norms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to say, like, oh, don't stereotype a man, right? It, well, probably you're going to get me right if you do, <laughs> you know, about like, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I, if if some of my uh, colleagues see this, uh, so like uh, 
my dad had uh, colorectal cancer, right, when he was 50. And they <clears throat> somehow decided that, like, there's some sort of gene affiliation. And it's like, I hate talking about this, but the cola, colonoscopy, right? Yeah. I had to do that when I was 40. I'm 46. Uh, I'm two years past it now. I'm overdue, right? And, and, yeah. and I, like, I always have problems with my stomach, right? So it's like, oh, you know. I, I told my colleagues, oh, like, I'm supposed to, they told me I got to do it. Yeah, you have to do and, it. And now they're all over my ass, but they've no asked me. They've asked, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's what, <laughs> good or pun intended. Or pun intended. Uh, but uh, they're, they're like, you know, they, I think they kind of gave up on asking me. They're like, hey, did you make your appointment? Did you make your appointment? Did you make, and it's been Did like, you? No. <laughs> so, Yeah. I told him something else the other day too, and they're like, "Oh, well, make an appointment." That's another one for you to not make an appointment. But why is it? <clears throat> me, me. Okay, I'm 52. I I put it off for two years also. Mm -hmm. Now I'm due. I, I I finally placed it in the books, so <laughs> it's 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 there. But then again, for me, it's fear. Yeah, yeah. For you, what is it? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm like. I don't think I'm avoidant of the doctor like if if i were to look back on my records i've got mostly annual at okay. least screenings things like this um i've been through periods which i've been told and diagnosed with like pre-diabetes uh um, like like that let's uh, talk about that let's go there let's let's um segment everything um uh, when when i was when i saw my results as pre-diabetic you're like ah don't think about it but i was i was all over myself right and then so what what was in your mind when the doctor said you're pre-diabetic what'd you do well so i don't know if it was pre-diabetes that the one i said don't worry about i think it was something else it was i think it was the, the creatinine the creatinine yeah so different okay, okay, different okay, one okay okay but but the, the pre-diabetes i think i told you like well you can do this do this like you can fix it right because it's probably behavior that got Correct. you there so you change your or the whiskeys that we always do it <laughs> i'm not I, you're never you're gonna notice that i never go like yeah <laughs> like i always just stay quiet with the whiskey advice like i love the whiskey <laughs> like i don't do it often but i yeah. probably do it on most of the podcast that, that we do with music <laughs> <laughs> um but as far as that, that to answer that question so uh this was probably five years ago and uh you know, they'll, they'll tell you, like, if you go regularly, you're going to get, like, one thing. You're going to get some sort of red flag here and there, right? right? Like, hey, last year you weighed 180. This year you weigh 185. Like, tighten it up, fat out. You know, like, they're yeah. going to tell you something. The doctor's going to tell you this, right? Um, or your blood pressure was this, and now it's, you get, like, mm. so if you listen to those, then you're, you're, and you do something about them, you're in pretty good shape, right? It's like that, those. So the metrics. Those, those uh, param yeah, those, yes. those alarms, right? Yes. Like. Okay, here to here, but if if you if you're cre creeping close to this, if you're going that way, just do things about it, right? Try and keep it keep it centered off. So uh, when they told me that, I mean, of course, coming from the industry that I do, like I'm like I don't want to be on the chair in the chair. At the same time, it's weird to be in this industry because, and I think I've said this before, that it almost feels like uh part of the story <laughs> you yeah that one day like people and I, i'm just i'm not just saying me but like you, you took care of dialysis patients like it almost seems like you know and and it's a like i said aging you know vascular things like diabetes and high blood pressure these are things that like we all get old yeah you know we all um have i guess risk for blood pressure yes. and, and vascular disorders like diabetes um so yeah, when I, when I had, I did pull out of that, um, changed behavior, and it's weird because I totally thought I was going to be there on my most recent uh, checkup, checkup, and I was nowhere near it. Um, Amen. Weight was not like my weight is actually not drastically different than it's been for years. It's the I think I had said this to you like a week ago or two weeks ago. It's just the way that it's sitting, like yeah, activity. Yes, you know what I mean, activity. Like no shoulders anymore, chest is different. Like all of that. So like, that's I just need to. We need to go back to the gym, you and me. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. there's dangers in that too, right? I know. <laughs> All male gym. <laughs> there's dangers. I got in that. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> so, True. But but yeah, um, you know, with with pre diabetes, I think uh, you know you, that's why you should be seeing a doctor, so you know when you're getting there. And then at least it's not like, well, nobody told you your yeah, cholesterol is high. I had a stroke. And I didn't know. You know, like if you're going to a doctor, like typically if you're seeing a doctor annually, you're, like I said, you're going to see some sort of red flag somewhere that right. do this. If you don't do it, then it's just like if you don't, you know, fill your tire up. With, so do doctors with actually, do doctors actually guide you, tell you, or? I think, I think they do normally. Um, or are they, are they also desensitizing <laughs> so many patients? Like they don't empathize with you in regard to your concern because your concern has not, is, is nothing compared to what they're dealing with. You know what I mean? I think that's a good, uh, I think that's a good question. So. Most of the doc, you know, because you speak with doctors a lot. Yeah, and if you go, like, if you have, what's your insurance? What sort of health plan are you in? Um, you know, you can't pay for better care, but you can pay for what you just talked about, like my concerns and mm -hmm. my time and things right. like, like you know, you can get more of that. And it's like, what what what's really going into that is just time that probably we should be putting in ourselves, right? Like. If you have enough time to like doc should you know it's moved two points like well shit like just you know stay on top of your diet stay on top of your exercise watch the, that that's great if more people were doing that then we wouldn't be where we're at the doctors are concerned when you've passed those when you like pass those saturated markers, markers uh, yeah because then it's like you're gonna spike from most of them are in some in sort of like i said a payer system yeah. or a health plan where if you end up in the hospital, you know, the, the, the expense is going to go way, way up on you. Right. Or we're going to be, um, Oh my God. So they don't really care about you. They care about paying too much I, for what you did. I, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that, <laughs> but, but I think that, you know, it's safe to say that, uh, performance metrics yes. are a massive part of what physicians will be thinking about. I don't want to say they don't care about you because I, I don't think that people get in healthcare that don't care about right people. I, I don't, you know, are there bad players or bad actors in healthcare? 100%. But I don't think people sought out to become a nurse or a doctor just to, you know, coat their pockets with, correct with, with money. Right. Uh, uh, and then to take advantage of the people that they're supposed to be caring for. I, I really believe that there's a more humane, you know, like humane um, purpose behind why they did that. But again, performance metrics, it's like how they're paid. Mm. Uh, it, when you think about healthcare, it is a business. If I don't make money off of the business, then I can't give more business. I can't give more care to more people. Profit should in ways uh, equate to more care and, and providing more access to care. Uh, if I'm going, if I'm bleeding as a business owner, right, I'm not going to offer more classes in, in dialysis, right? If I'm bleeding as a nursing home or a dialysis provider, then I'm going to have to shut my doors and people can't get, uh, get the care they need. Correct. So I think it's important that, you know, we do think about healthcare as a business and understand that the business has to, <laughs> does okay. have to make some money. So when we, when we think of healthcare as a business, is it safe to say that we have to see it as a service-oriented business or a product-oriented business or both, in your opinion? Like, like okay, dialysis patients. Your, we remember we had this conversation, Musings with Morales, the Musings podcast is like the gun that you, <clears throat> like the gun that you point at your foot. Mm -hmm. Because what we're doing, what you're spearheading for Musings is prevention. Mm-hmm. Let's let's educate our community so that they don't fall into the trap of uh, diabetes type two. Eventually, go into dialysis, which, by the way, is what the school needs to train dialysis mm -hmm. techs, right? Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with this? Like, yeah, you're I mean, doing you're doing a podcast. <clears throat> So you're catching them from the prevention and you're catching them from the cure side. 
Yeah. Put the mic closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, we're not cannibalizing ourselves or, or we're not cutting away business, mm-hmm. if you will. There's more than 37 million people that have chronic kidney disease in the United States. Uh, a big chunk of them don't know that they have anything yeah. wrong with them, period. Like, they don't know they have type 2 diabetes. They don't know they have hypertension, right? Uh, they're going to progressively get to a stage of kidney failure where, where they will need dialysis. If they're lucky. If they're lucky. I hope, yeah. I hope people are catching that. If they're lucky. Especially in other countries where you have to pay it out of pocket. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. We're privileged uh, in the United States when it comes to if your kidneys fail, what's going to happen? Yeah. You actually have some uh, uh, nationally covered insurance, right? Medicare and right. Medicaid, uh, and you're, in, you're entitled to become an active beneficiary uh, under an ESRD entitlement and stage renal disease, disease, disease entitlement. entitlement. Yeah. So, but but yeah, it, you know, when I say if if they're lucky, um, you think about type two diabetes, uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. And let's call it a third of the country having one of these or both of these. Type 2 diabetes is is one of the top 10 killers of Americans on its own. Wow. But it also is the number one cause of chronic kidney disease, which is also a top killer of Americans or uh, people in the United States. So top two killers, Mm. diabetes or top 10 killers, diabetes, one of them. And then ESRD. Chronic, ki- chronic, chronic, chronic kidney, kidney disease, disease is another one. Then if you talk about like blood pressure issues and vascular disorders. Hypertension. High, high, uh, uh, cardiovascular yeah. events, heart disease, things like this. This is also top 10 killer. So th- just when you, when you talk about kidney disease, like there's a lot wrapped into it that it's affecting more than we know. I went to like high schools and uh, it's actually, it's, one of the things that I really like to do is educate. Well, I, I think I've always, even before dialysis, I've always taken what I've got and like tried to duplicate or, or share. Right. But, uh, with going to the high schools, we go talk to, uh, like career pathways in some cases or career fairs or job fairs, stuff yeah. like this with districts and stuff like that. And, uh, typically, the place where like workforce is really, really active is when I say workforce, like uh, workforce investment boards and job centers and things like this that are helping people with resources to either um, pay for tuition right. or, you know, soft skills, development, things like this, you know, get themselves to where they can upskill or uh, yeah, upskill yeah. or, yeah. you know, make a, a, a an, an incline and an, an uptick in their profession, right? So th- the areas that are typically most active there are like urban areas, um, poverty areas, mm-hmm. low high school graduation rates, things like this. Um, and time and time again, at least in the schools that we go to, we find ourselves with a largely Hispanic um, and African American group that we're speaking to, right? And uh, we say like, hey, uh, how many of you know somebody with type two diabetes? And everybody's hand goes like up, like, like they know it. They, the kids know it, right? They know what this stuff is. Uh, how many of you know somebody with high blood sugar? Boom. How many of you know somebody who went blind from their diabetes? Boom. How many of you know somebody who lost a foot a limb, or yeah. a limb? Yeah, and you know most of them. Chronic kidney disease and less hands go up. Less hands somebody on dialysis and less hands and then uh somebody who uh is a dialysis tech one dang one hand right but it's like when when i asked that question do you know somebody who's diabetic everybody raised their hand it it really means that indirectly everybody knows somebody who's going to be touched by that dialysis by that dialysis technician but these high school students didn't know at the time just asking if dialysis and diabetes were kind of really no. uh, they didn't know no, no, no. 
Yeah. So, so your I, job was to put two at one. And I want to say that every person out there doesn't know, but for the most part, yeah, it's like delivering simple information. Yeah. We're not like making, you know, uh, medical policies or we're not creating new medicine. We're just talking about very simple things that everybody knows about, but doesn't know about. Like y'all know a diabetic. Did you know at least the chronic kidney disease is the number one cause of it? Did you know that, uh, people who need, uh, uh, who have kidney failure need dialysis and without it, they would succumb to life, right? They would expire, right? Like no dialysis, no life. If, you, if you're at that stage. Two of my friends, not one, two of my friends, actually no, three, Jimmy, Jamel, and Julian, all letter J's. Mm. Thank God I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, no, no J. No J. But yeah, they didn't know. Like um, Jimmy and Julian were, they were slender mm. and they just collapsed. Type one, type, what was type there? two, type, they were type oh, wow. two. That's crazy. Uh, one's African-American, one's Filipino. Mm -hmm. Didn't have their annual checkup. They just collapsed. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the <clears throat> talking about the annual checkup uh, and, and you mentioned one of them being African-American, uh, there's kind of like anomaly. It's it's like a quagmire, right? Like, mm. w why is there such a high incidence of high blood pressure among among African Americans? Um, and it, and it's like, depending on the age of a male and female, they kind of show like malignant hypertension at different ages. Wow! But it's kind of standard almost um, in the United States. Uh, that there's high blood pressure in the African American community, and then again, that's one of the top two causes of kidney disease. Yeah, uh, if you're in a uh, African American demographic, um, you would find a lot of dialysis centers. Is it the lifestyle? Is it the, the so? Why I say that, you know, specifically with African American, that it's a quagmire is because, okay, diabetes, type two diabetes, and high blood pressure are both like predominantly uh, lifestyle attributing, okay. okay? But with African-American, there there is like an anomaly to where like even with children, like babies, having malignant hyper, hypertension. Wow. So there's a lot of research kind of going into like, what is it, you know, is it a, is it a, a genetic thing, something in the DNA? Is it environmental? Um, you know, what exactly is, is going on there? So I don't want to say that it's 100% Mm. preventable in, in that case because i don't know enough about like that full ideology with the african-american um demographic specifically but when you again when you talk about type 2 diabetes and hypertension like wh how do you how do you get it like most of us get it because we stop exercising right. or stop being active um what sort of intake we have as far as um processed and carbs and sugars um and the quantities that you know, we, we talk, we try and talk about these things on musings in a way that, you know, again, just part of life. Like we all like to eat. We like to, I, I like to have whiskey, right? So you like your patties and your rice. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, so like when you talk about quantities, right. And, and I'll tell this story over and over about my wife. The first time she cooked, she took not just so, some soy sauce, but a whole, Bottle of soy sauce. A bottle of soy sauce and adobo. Put it in, in adobo <laughs> one, one dish, right? Um, so yeah, we just you know we we try and talk about those sort of things. Those are the, I think the subtle things in life that get us there, but also that could keep us from progressing to a point where we're in need of early care. How about this? Since you mentioned your wife, but it's not about her. It's about culture, mm. Hispanic culture, Filipino culture. Mm. We can't say no to food. Yeah. Could it be? Partly that. Imagine going to a house and you smell the kitchen. Yeah. You know you're going to have to eat, right? Yeah. You cannot say no. Yeah. Well, I think, you know. <clears throat> and, you can, and you can't eat little because they'll see it yeah. as an insult. Yeah. I mean, food is, for many cultures, food is family, right? Yeah. Uh, food is the social time. Food is the bonding time. Food is love. Food is a love language, you know. Uh, and... It, it's one of the things like uh as i get older like i man i don't know if we can get 
to this age without regret but like i just find myself regretting so many things in life even like turning down meals with yes. certain people right you know like hey oh man she's so fucking annoying like you eat you eat you, you know like yeah. i can remember these these voices <laughs> echoing in my in my head from my whole life of different people right that would just you know again at the time i'm like oh my god so annoying but that really meant a lot to them and like yes. you said like um, the rejection that you gave them yeah well the, the, <laughs> then you know at 46 years old i finally listen and start to make some travel and i went to the philippines how's that for the first time that was great i mean it was really really great um i'm glad i didn't get asked to eat everything because <laughs> did they make you eat yeah i ate a lot of stuff oh. but but i didn't like <laughs> wouldn't do it nothing too crazy or i should say nothing too adventurous maybe okay. i shouldn't say crazy um uh I didn't eat like street food, which Damn. When, when I watch on like other yeah. channels and stuff, I'm yeah. like, man, that's what I would love to yeah. go. Like, I don't know what do you call it, blogging, blogging. Like, yes, I love the, to do a yes. travel and just yes. like, but then I'm like, oh, I don't know if my, I was just talking about my stomach, right? I don't know if my stomach can handle it. But like, I, I, I learned through the culture and actually some of my employees that are based in Philippines. But after I went, I was like, hey, I need to understand the culture more. Uh, and they gave me a whole presentation, right? And one of the things was like, it was a whole slide on like how it's uh, it's uh, rude to decline food. And I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, god damn it, man! Like I just I remembered all these voices uh, in my head through life of like I said times where I was annoyed from like so many reminders of you eat, you eat, or maybe like bringing a thir second third plate, yeah. you know, like yeah. wanting wanting to like. I guess clean the whole buffet or whatever. There's yeah. more, Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and and then also taking food home. Yes, that was the that was the other one that really surprised me. Is like you're supposed to take yes. the food home and like you're like the, it, it shows that you love it. But but you, <laughs> you know it's funny. Also, it's like on the other end, it's like I'm like oh shit, they're here. They're gonna take food home. And certain people in the fact like they're gonna before the party's over, they're gonna take food home. Right. right? I'm like I I remember that used to annoy me, but now I'm like okay, it's just culture, right? But as far as the the culture leading to obesity and things like i think yeah 100 percent um there are and and i wouldn't say it's like filipino culture hispanic Latino, it's it's culture of like an individual like household yeah that could also be an yes. expression of a neighborhood or, or or a community in itself uh so i i can think of time well a time where i was in the hospital and uh, a young kid was in the waiting room. He was like a really fat kid. Uh, ended up next, like the next, whatever, next bed from where I was at. And I could hear the conversation with the doctor and his mother. And, you know, long story short, it turned out that he had some slow gut, some abdominal pain. Uh, he had just eaten McDonald's, like 20 pack of nuggets nuggets or something like that and you know like a super size coke or i don't think they have it anymore right i'm not sure but uh the super size anyways but uh wow the, the doctor was like really ripped into the mom who by the way the mom and the kid were as about as wide as they were tall uh just really really fat fat um wide-bodied individuals um and that was you know she was like well work and like her, she had an excuse for it right it was a culture of convenience or fast yeah. food, right? So it's easier to get some fast food. Um, and and I, I'll tell you, like my son, he's 10, my youngest son, he, he loves McDonald's. And like every time we get it, like if I eat it, like it will just jack up my stomach, like I'll pay for it, right? Yeah. And I always think about that kid every time. It's like, yes, that's exactly what was going on with him. He eat that food. <laughs> He was exposed to it so much, he, you know, his gut just stopped working. He was type two diabetic. Uh, and the doctor was ripping into the mom, like, this is not his fault. Like he doesn't buy himself these meals. You buy it for him. Uh, you're contributing to his chronic illness. That's going to kill him. Uh, and it was like, you know, next door listening to it, like poor lady, but at the same time, poor, poor kid, like he's the kid, he's the, he's in the car. Like I talked about, right. He's yeah. in the car for the ride not knowing that it's leading to uh, chronic illness. You know, speaking of that, no. when did we stop cooking? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> give a shout out to um, Chef Tunes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Saul Lopez, who you had as your guest um, mm-hmm. on Musings. He, he does healthy meal preps for athletes and you subscribe to his, to his meal prep. Yeah. It's a way to go in, eh, no? I yeah. mean, it's a way to go toward better health. Yeah. If we're investing. Yep. How would you recommend meal prepping as a source of, as a food source, as opposed to going to fast food? Well, uh, financially, I mean, is it the same? I, I think they're the same thing, actually. Like now, meal cause, prepping, you know, but because you mentioned how much was, um, can you mention how much Saul uh, charges per plate? I, I think Ballpark. it's probably about, probably about ten bucks a plate. Yeah, uh, McDonald's number five, which is chicken nuggets, fries, and coke, mm. twelve, twelve, yeah, so fifty. So yeah, so much. I think it's cheaper, like <clears throat> with most meal prep that you can find on the internet, you know, or any of the uh, the socials. Um, what's in it is gonna is gonna vary, but the thing I like about uh, meal prep is that if when you say what about cooking like yeah you can look at meal prep and then you go like oh i could do that like that's i've done that a few times and you know <laughs> it's like oh, i could do that so it's like then start you know it gets you thinking you know i like some things we learned on musings is that like there's you know fitness trainers there's dietitians there's meal preps there's medications you know like ozempic right yeah Oh and my it's God. like, you know, do it. And yeah, fuck, you'll lose a shitload of weight, man. But stop doing it. Back and more. But, with interest. But it's like, what else do you change? Ah. Like, if you if you do Ozempic and you change other things with it and then you stop Ozempic, but you keep those other changes, then you're okay. If, if that makes sense. Makes so it's perfect like, sense. So it's like, okay, let me meal prep. Well... Why am I doing that? Because I'm trying to lose some, oh, I lost some weight. Oh, let me start walking. Oh, let me start blah, 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 you know, lifting some weight. Let me start whatever. So it has to be augmented. Yeah, things just start. Yeah. And some of it will stick, some of it will not, right? Like I went through like some, I guess my old younger days, like I was a, I was a pretty, uh, what's the right word? Uh, I forgot the way they categorize you based off of your, your body fat and stuff like, but I was like a, at at a high level, yeah. like elite level as far as body fat and um, just the activities. Like your, your BMI was uh, yeah, and the amount of activity I did uh-huh. um, for week cardio stuff like that. I, I did a lot, right? Um, as a man, when I say man, like not that twenties is not no. man, but when I say like you know in my thirties and late thirties, at forty, I was probably in the best shape of my entire life you were jacked yeah i was like yeah um so but that was like i did a lot of things to do that okay and then probably the one thing i didn't do enough of which if i would have done it then i would have been like crazy levels of body fat was really focused on nutrition um i really focused on like the amount of calories spent and the way that i spent them but i didn't and i just thought about like eat a lot of protein oh, yeah. like i just thought like that and just eat as much protein as i can and eat as much as i can but i never thought about calories i never thought about uh-huh. um sugars and process and stuff like that but I, I i had good results um but in in you know where i'm at now today like obviously like i don't hit the gym anymore right like i'm trying to get back into some things um I know it sounds weird, but and I never thought I'd be there. I'm like, oh, I started walking. <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, so. My my wife bought this. I don't know what do they think it's called? Uh, the cyclone or the treadmill? Treadmill. Treadmill. But it's just like on the ground. Yeah. And it's a little cheap one, but it's pretty pretty damn good. Uh, so been started doing that again. Uh, like half squat rack in my room and just like right. trying to keep my legs underneath me. But like right. I used to do a lot of upper body stuff. I need to get back to those sort of things and it's been kind of a plan since we've been talking because you remind me every week yeah. <laughs> even up to now yeah <laughs> yeah uh, you know but but i think we need to because like as brothers as friends we want to keep each other in each other's lives longer right yep 
And as we get older, time becomes faster. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know for for some reason when we were kids, time was so slow. Yeah. Now that we're older, we're like, I'm 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 like Oh my god, I don't have 50 years. Yeah. If ever. Yeah. I feel like it's, you know, I I feel like when we were kids and when we we're young, we're always looking forward to things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh I I can say that that kind of changed. Like it's not as much looking forward to things. It's kind of like you, you tend to look back, back at a lot of things. Uh, right. Uh, you tend to, and, and that, I don't feel like I'm that person that's like living in the past, but I also know that you, you learn from like my favorite subjects always been history. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you learn from the past and uh, you become who you are because of all of that. Right. Like yeah. struggle, uh, victory, um, pain, uh, pleasure, all those things. That's, that's what develops you. Right. Yeah. And if I were to think back, like when I was a kid, holy shit, like <laughs> the first president I could remember was Ronald Reagan. Like, okay. In my, you know, as a kid, that's the first president I could remember was Ron was Ronald Reagan. And, uh, I mean, if you just think about like the taglines back then, right. Like, uh, say no to drugs. <laughs> Yeah, dare. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dare and all that. Like, can you imagine, like, cannabis store no. on every, you know, on every, every corner. corner? And, you know, <laughs> I always think about, like, what would Ronald Reagan think of the way that cannabis has paid taxes in, in right. cities and communities? Like, you know, it, it worked out, actually. Um, maybe it didn't on certain areas as well. But, like, you think about the political taglines, you think about the social taglines back then, the um, respect for individuals. Yeah. Um, not just from a individual level, but from like a... Social. A media. Yeah. yeah social uh, level. Uh, the TV shows, the, the, <laughs> the, the radio stations, like what we were talking about and what was okay to talk about and... Mm. what's okay and what <clears throat> what we're talking about today is completely different yeah different things right so what i'm getting at is that like only with exposure and history could we be where we're at today with maybe we are more inclusive of other voices than we were in the past yeah you, you know what i'm saying because we we we've heard their stories now and we can either identify or empathize or at least respect um, or tolerate each other, if, if that makes sense. The tolerate each other, I, I think we used to be able to tolerate each other back then. <laughs> now it's so... Yeah, well, you, you're right. I mean, I guess you're right. I, I, in certain areas, right? it's become less... Uh, toxic. Yeah, like where we cannot, we can't even be in the same mm, country anymore, yeah. right? Um, and then others, like it's it's avenues of life that would have never been True. accepted or discussed. I mean, would have been illegal uh, when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it it's looking back on things. You know, whether it be nagging grandmas or aunts, you know, about food, or it be about the way that you know we think about our neighbors. Uh, like, uh, I, I'm happy with the life I've, I've lived in that regard to be able to, uh, come to a place today where like, I feel like I'm a part of any community, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I've lived in the same community for my whole life, but, uh, I don't have any place that I feel like it's the only place I can sit, you know, or, or I can't that, sit in this one. Like, in other words, you're, you're where you're at by choice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And that's 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 very different to be to be where you are by choice as opposed to I'm here because I have no choice. Oh, two different things. Yeah. With regard to your kids, hmm. how do they see you now as the man you are in your in your perspective? Huh? And how do they see you as a podcast host? I don't know. Uh I've I've talked to Camila. Shout out by the way to Camila. <laughs> I, she's very supportive <clears throat> yeah. of the like. I couldn't say uh, so. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't say how they think about the podcast to tell you truth. Like, I have no real lens on on that. Uh, as like dad, and you know, it's they've all worked with me at some point, and two of them still, my daughter still work with me. Uh, I think that uh, you know, kind of like going back to the the the, the love language. You know, yeah. like okay, I can't tell you certain things, but like just look at what I'm actually saying or doing you know and this like, is for you guys yeah that 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 and I, I think they get it um of the of the three that are adults uh two of them have taken more of an interest in the type of businesses that the, in operating uh, and working within the type of businesses that i own yeah um one has taken more of like you know I'd love to take some of the money, <laughs> um, but, but he's got his own, like my son, he's got his own, he's really got a great pathway, uh, himself, a business mind. He does, uh, stuff with like koi ponds yeah. and, uh, yeah, koi ponds. Did your uncle used to do that? My, that's right. That's right. You did like a yeah. website. His website. Yeah. His website. Yeah. So he <clears throat> took over my uncle's clientele. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and he kind of took it to a, a, a different level of clientele. Like he's got like a really mm. affluent type of clientele that are paying big bucks for their fish. And for anyways, uh, the, 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 the daughter, my two daughters that are working in, in the school specifically, um, you know, one of them's a nurse. One of them just graduated high school. The nurse, when she, when she first went to school to be a nurse and it sounds weird coming from me because like, I've been in healthcare. I've worked under a nurse's license for so so long. I told her like, you don't want to be a nurse. You and, really? Oh yeah, I told her. Discouraged? That. Okay. I did, and and please don't think I'm discouraging anybody <laughs> out there from becoming a nurse because we need more nurses, right? We're in a shortage yeah. in the United States of nurses, so I'm not discouraging becoming a nurse. But like, I was discouraging this specific child of mine from being a nurse, and and the reason why is because I know she likes money. Right. But, and this is only my opinion. Please do not take this <laughs> as a, as a hit. Like my feeling is if, if you like money, um, you know, you have to decide on whether you like spending it or you're just like having it. Ah. And if you're a nurse, you're not going to spend your money, <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and if you do, it's like, you're not going to enjoy it because you, mm. like, if you're going to make a lot of money, you're going to work your ass off. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, they, they make great money. Um, they have job security, but I just knew where she was at. I was like, you, you want to do bit like, uh, so she went, in other to, words, less, less, uh, more for less. That might make sense. Like, yeah. Like um, for, for nurses, they have to work long hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like, uh, and you know, I've worked in dialysis. I've worked in nursing homes. I worked in some public health operations and I, I feel like, you know, nurses, not easy work. Yeah. It, it's hard work. Like if you think it's easy, then, then it's not the, it's not the career for you in my opinion. Or if it was easy, a lot of people would have done it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, it, it's not, it's not the, the TikTok, Instagram glamor <laughs> job that it's made out to be with mm -hmm. what we like, kind of what we see today. Yes. Like, uh, I, I'm going to go on a tangent here, but, uh, go like it, it almost, uh, it just irks me to see like the healthcare profession, like being exploited, uh, humorized, yeah. uh, glamorized. Um, and then, uh, like put like such a high value on like monetizing. So like if you were to look on TikTok or Instagram today, like nursing, and and you know like what's the trending sort of thing it's going to be like these things that say you can make three hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars as a crna or you don't have to even be a nurse you can just be an aesthetic nurse and like you know you can like i've seen business. that like it's kind of like it's painting this picture of like nursing didn't start out in the war fields you know uh taking care of the basics for for soldiers right it's like oh you're, you're how about the, how about this we already forgot the slogan, heroes work here. 
Yeah. And that was only a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my point w- with my daughter was that I just think it was, it, it's a lot of hard work. Um, not that I'm against hard work, but I saw like a business cap on her and, uh, She's kind of like on the fence right now because she still loves the the clinical side. Right. Um, so she's actually, she works at my school. She's thinking about taking a role in a, uh, interventional uh, center. Uh, so we were just talking about this today. I won't do any spoiler alert until it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's official. But, yeah. um, you know, she likes the clinical side. Yeah. Um, my younger daughter is kind of, I think she's more on the business side. She likes sales. Um, so I think she'll stick there. She's not showing any interest towards the, the clinical side, like solidly yet, but she does have to learn about it. If she's going to be representing, uh, the business, right? right. Like, what do they do? <clears throat> who are they doing it for? These sort of things. Yeah. Now you're an only child. Yeah. And, um, I like, I like your dynamics with your mom. Hmm. When, when you when you started off on this journey as a businessman, we talked about the support of Cat. Mm. What about mom? So uh, the business I started. She was with, with, with yeah, the she company. was with a different school. Yeah. Uh, so I, I started a a dialysis training program in two thousand nine, but I started working for another one in two thousand, which was actually uh, her sister's, her my aunt's yeah. business. So I got certified and then like I knew it pretty well right from the gate because I had helped at home with my uncle who yes. was a dialysis patient. So once I started doing dialysis, it was like, you know, like he knows that like he's good. So have him training people in the field, have him come into the class. So I started teaching with the school, right? Uh, my mom worked there as, as well in 2000. Six, I kind of threw an idea out there of like, hey, why don't you expand? And was a little bit like slapped in the face from my own family. Like, you know. Stay in your lane. Yeah, you're not enough, basically, right? Uh, so, like, we parted ways uh, in 2006. And I, I was like, well, I'm going to do it myself, but had no idea how to do it. Um, started teaching at other schools that were doing the same sort of program that I own now. Mm-hmm teaching for their programs just learning the ropes and my mom stayed there and worked at the her sister's school because i didn't have anything to to offer her um right it was for her that was the stable thing to do she had a job there you know uh yeah it was very sustainable for her um she was supportive but she didn't want to be too supportive because like she can't say you know conflict of interest right i I don't want to say, no, she was a hundred percent supportive, but she wasn't like vocal. I wasn't asking her for information and she wasn't giving me information. Yes. Like it wasn't like, Hey, here's what we're doing. Yes. Here's how we did it. Like we weren't playing that. Cause like my whole, uh, thing in 2006 when I was like, let's do it is like, that I know how to do it. And I know how to do it in a way that you could scale. That's, Correct. That was my thought, right? It's like because that's what you were suggesting already. Yeah, I was like, you're here, but you could be here, right? So, um, by the way, that school ended up shutting down during COVID. They, you know, we were competitors for a long time, but right. her school ended up shutting down during COVID. We did not um, more lessons that, that did, we learned. Is it because you did the e-learning? It's that? because it's because we figured it out, like yeah. how to how to make do during COVID uh, through some virtual classes, right? Um, ticket like you said, e-learning, um, everybody knows zoom and things like, so, you know, we took it that route yeah. during that time we were able to, uh, pull through it and, um, it actually opened up more doors to do that nationally right. and have an, uh, a approved online program. But yeah, uh, as far as mom, like she was, uh, supportive, um, like, throughout life obviously as an only child, like, you know, moms with an only child, like oh, yeah. that's all their attention is on. Right. Uh, when, when I left, it was kind of like, you know, <laughs> what do I do now? Right. Um, but let me see, uh, 2010, 12, maybe, uh, she actually came to work with us. So about six years after, no, sorry, we started 2009. So three years after we started, 
uh, she came in and worked with us in like admissions and sales and she's been there, been there ever since. So how does it feel like having mom work with you, your kids and your mom? How does it feel? Uh, it's, it's, it's good. Like the, <coughs> it's like three generations, no? Yeah. The, it's, I mean, you do it for, that's why you do it like for family anyways. Right. Yeah. So it's good if, if that works out. Right. And it's worked out. Um, the, so the good is like, that's why you do it. You know, it's, it's like the, you're, you're, you're giving people, uh, an occupation that is the whole reason why you started a business in the first place, then the level of trust that you, you, you should be able to have with family, right. Yeah. Is it's different. Right. Um, I, I think the challenging part is like, uh, you know, you're, you're never the boss. Like, and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but you, you are right. Yeah. So, and that's like, that's frustrating. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll admit like that's super frustrating. Cause, uh, I like being the boss. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I, I, I don't know what there is about like, <clears throat> running a nursing home, running public health operation, running dialysis, like there's something about being the person that has the authority. Yeah. I don't know. It fits. It's, it's fun. It, but, but it's not all fun. It's because it's like I said, it's like the, the level of responsibility that you right. carry. Right. So it's like, I can stay calm through those things. Like, okay. <sighs> payroll didn't come. Uh, you know, Joanne called me an asshole or, you know, or, or, you know, insulted me or, um, you know, didn't clean the patient. Right. Like I can deal with like, right. So, so that's why I say like being the boss, like I'm okay with that. Cause I'm, I'm willing to take that too. Right. And, and when, when I talk about like working with family, like if they will take all that, I would, I would love not having, but that's what that's what I miss not being the boss. It's like when, like you know, like don't listen, and then when, when the shit hits the fan, like hey, you oh, you deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so, but you know, overall, again, like I'm um, I'm really happy, and I think it's been part of the essence of the company is that um, it's a family, you know, it's family a family, yeah, yeah, family ran, family yeah. operated. Uh, it's it's cool to build, like you said, three generations there. Uh, we have trained parents and now their kids wow um which is a weird wow it's a really weird feeling so yeah their parents are dialysis techs or even retired now their kids are coming to us um, and we've had many families like that so it's a it's a pretty cool feeling it's to circle back um if people want to put their foot in the door into the healthcare industry because huh. it's pretty hard to get into nursing yeah. Would being a dialysis tech something you'd advise, whether you owned or not owned a school? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they want to be in healthcare. I, I, I'll go back to what I said earlier is they want to help like people. There, yeah. There's like this purpose, right? And if I, if I can't, I can't really, I can't really go like, I can't really think of like, okay, what's a group of people? that just they need help and i'm not like pinpointing anybody i'm just kind of well, like eh, what's what is an uh, a non-discriminatory issue in health right that that i can just help people it's not like people that look like me or that think like me or that vote like me but just help people all people right like because that's what you're going to find in a dialysis center right it's like it doesn't different, discriminate different yeah. sizes and colors and tones of voices and like i said uh different jersey <laughs> you know it's gonna go all over the place right so th this is a place where you find that like um i remember one video we did years ago pago um i think jj did the voiceover yeah <clears throat> and there was like this flash of people and babies and old and young and all ethnicities right and it's like um said something like could ESRD happen to you or something yes, like that. Yes, right? I remember it's like, that. Well, sh yeah, it can. So if you're looking for something that's like just 
you want to help people and it doesn't matter what people like all people this is it right um then you say okay healthcare like uh what do i want to do in healthcare i want to be a doctor are you sure <laughs> like are you sure did you want to be a doctor okay maybe you want to be a doctor but do you know what kind right so maybe you want to be a nurse but do you know what kind uh maybe you want to be a social worker but do you know what setting mm -hmm. that you want to work in right so then you go like, okay, again, where's a place where I can just get exposure to a bunch of different people with a bunch of different needs? And it's like people in dialysis center, they have so many different needs. Besides the need for dialysis, they need uh, chronic disease management, like their right. diabetes and their hypertension, right? They, they, they're taking medications for that stuff. They're getting blood draws. So you're seeing phlebotomy. They're seeing a social worker getting psych psychology, psychiatry, medications, you know, things like Correct. this. Um, they're seeing a nutritionist and managing this, uh, different sort of aspects of their disease processes. Uh, they're seeing specialists like a podiatrist, mm. uh, like a, a cardiologist. Um, they're coming from a nursing home being transported and, and being transported back, right? Um, they're a home pit. Like, so there's just wow. so many, you, you might come in as a dialysis tech and then decide you want to be an interventional radiologist, right? Which you never heard of until you met a dialysis Right, because you're also exposed to these people, to these professionals while being a dialysis tech. Yeah, yeah. And then these companies that provide dialysis, um, they're massive. And they, they have some of the most competitive benefits packages on the planet. So when you say like, I become an employee of one of these big companies, right? Uh, look at what their benefits look like. It, they pay competitively. They have a benefits package, like from the vision and right. dental and health. Um, and then they typically have like some sort of professional development type of benefit where it could be uh, continuing education for your licensure, like to keep your certification or your license. Or it could be even like tuition reimbursements. Like I'm a tech now, but I want to be a nurse. So... I work for this big company. One of my benefits is under that program is that I can get a certain amount of money reimbursed from my uh, the tuition I paid out. You know, there are specifics on what you got to show. Yeah, things like this. Are but they gra like grants? No, different. Um, they're they're tuition not, reimbursements. Yeah, like tuition reimbursements, and then there are actually full scholarships in some of these as well. They send people to for become, further education to become nurses yeah. and things. And then there's also. Uh, you know, like uh, I have a student, he's, I, I want to say about 12 years, um, been a tech now, and uh, he's, a, he's a tech. Uh, I don't think he has a college degree. Um, he was just promoted as an administrator of one of those large wow. uh, company facilities. But uh, some of these companies, they have that type of development as well. It's like, okay, you're a tech, now you want to be on the business end, and they have like these executive or these management type of pathways where they have um, kind of like a coursework, so uh, it's, internal it, coursework. So it really gets your foot in the door. Well, I mean, when you think about it, like it's a, it's a, it's a whole stream, right? Yeah. Like you go all the way upstream and a patient is gained some weight become pre-diabetic, become slightly hypertensive, go all the way downstream, they're on dialysis and need transplant, right? right. And, and then when you look at the, the people that are out in the field as well, like there's a whole, a whole stream of where they could find themselves. They could end up as a tech being introduced to the downstream end of care for the patients like with dialysis, but then finding out that there are people who help them to not get to dialysis, so they want to become a dietitian or they want to mm. become a nurse and be a CKD, chronic kidney yes. disease educator or something like that. So I, I just think the, you know, there's, there is not a glass ceiling. It, it's, it's not like you have to, it's good to go to school, but you don't have to go to school. I think you just have to like be uh, a, a master of the craft that you're, you're right. in right now, like add value to it. As and well. get certified for it. Maybe. Yeah, there Maybe. are certain, I mean, for, for dialysis techs, definitely getting certified is part of the job. But, uh, you know, you can find other certifications as well, like project management, right. and 
uh, infection control or like in the nursing homes, like DSD certification. DSDs, or yeah. Stuff IP, like this, right? wound care. Yeah. Now, let's land this. Are you happy where you're at? Mm, I'm not uh, unhappy where I'm at. I, I can't say that, you know, uh, I have any sense of satisfaction. Like, and that's... Is that good or bad? Uh, probably bad, but maybe good too. Would you know when it's time to hang it up? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, maybe, because I think I've grown a lot in that regard to like <clears throat> at least know there's probably a time to do it like whereas even a few years back i probably thought like no nah, i'm just gonna rest when i die you know like that's yeah that's that's been my mentality for a long time is like you know don't need to sleep don't you know don't need to like there's a time for that which is when you when you die right um but like taking the trip to the Philippines for me was a big like eye opener. Yeah, big because uh, I've never. Maybe I still haven't taken a real vacation because that was business related. But um, so maybe I've never taken just a vacation. But in the last year, I went to Cancun with uh, my wife and daughter and our kids, um, and kind of like you know was on my computer and stuff. <laughs> but like still had fun. Uh, that was a week. It was too long. Uh, then went to the <laughs> Philippines and did that for a week. And that was partial business and mostly business and a little bit of family time. And then like a lot of drinking. <laughs> um, but I found myself like, Oh, I want to go back or I want to go somewhere. Um, I'll go to Amsterdam, uh, end of this month. Right. Um, with a, a colleague of mine and, uh, starting to think about like, yeah, stuff like that. Like I want to, in enjoy um so i don't know if i'll if i'll know when it's time to kind of hang up the gloves i don't know what i guess what i would hope is that my i, I would i really hope this is that i could secure the network and the means to provide my kids with opportunities that i could mm -hmm. be like a guidance to them yeah. not that i would control it but that it would be enough of a you know one i can inject financially right and then two that i could guide towards right business developments um i think you know i'm 46 there you know my oldest daughter's 27 uh just that's a faster car you know what i mean yeah. like they, they, they their uh, ability is so much so far beyond what my ability is right it's just about i, I think the ethic that some time to develop and maybe also came from early age as well um but that's in them too like they've seen that true my, my kids have watched that right they've seen the work ethic they've seen the hard nights the you know going through uh graduate studies after <laughs> uh, after, after work after hours after, after obligations after, yeah like i mean literally like i didn't start school until like 9 p.m um, for my, I did online graduate degree, um, and, uh, majority of my studies, I should say were online and I would start like 9 PM and, you know, 2, 2 AM, wow. uh, doing work, you know, and then go, go to work and then go to work. And, uh, you know, like I said, over the years, it's been owning business. Uh, I've taken some jobs and running a nursing home is one of them, which is, shouldn't even be called a job. It should be called like a, a life. Because you literally live in the nurse. You know, and you were right? on call. Well, well, you were basically there. Yeah, you're just, you're not on call. It's just, that's your spot. Like, yeah. you know, you're the CEO. Like, you're the one who families are right. going to call, you know. Um, then in 2020, I was called to the uh, a COVID operation in Orange County, which was really a large <clears throat> operation testing uh, 20,000 people a day um in the first wave of the pandemic and uh i remember like maybe my position has changed a little bit today but i remember at that time thinking like like this thing is just killing so many people mm -hmm. and what am i gonna do like sit here online and talk to people or go like 
help out right um so when did that and it, it was an, it was like the nursing home it was like seven days a week wow um, and for sure more than 12 hours every day uh worked with a really group great r really great group of people <clears throat> um that were high performers like all of them but well, we had a command center that was like high performers um entrepreneurs business owners from orange county area um kind of uh an elite group of mainly uci graduates yeah. that were our command center staff um and then out in the line we had like entry level people like disneyland workers um and we had bottle service just strippers everybody uh, yeah like uh, people who were not working came and did covid testing and uh like I said, it, it was another one of those things that just, uh, it was consuming. So, you know, the question you asked about musings and podcasting, yeah. like, I think we've passed the point of like, am I going to get burnt out on it? Uh, am I going to, you know, is, is it going to be something that sticks? It's something that's going to stick. I'm going to put everything into it. Running a nursing home, I put everything into it. I think that's when I figured out I lost, <laughs> I, I was actually bald. <laughs> uh, and then with the, uh, the COVID operation, it was like, yeah, I'm, I, I, I know I'm ball. <laughs> no. Are you having fun? I am. Yeah. I, you know, it, I don't like getting older. Um, and, and, you know, it maybe your, your, the lens of your kids changes when they get older. Yeah. Like you, they don't need you as much, you know, they, uh, yeah, it, it, it just changes. They, they get smart, you know? They get too smart for you sometimes, right? But uh, what what I do like is uh, I'm still young enough to do a lot, yeah, huh? but I'm old enough to where like some of the, like I don't have to prove I can do a lot. Like when I was in 20s and 30s, I could walk into a room and I'm like, I know I'm gonna fuck everybody right, up. Right, like, now you just. Yeah, I'm like gonna like outwork everybody. And it's like, I, I would have to sell myself, you know? Now it's a little bit less like tr sell myself um, and I get the opportunities, uh, that I'm, I've always wanted. Yeah. Um, I get kind of the credibility, um, after being in the industry for so many years and kind of like just staying consistent, like with, you say with the podcast, right? Uh -huh. So like what, what I'd say like to tax and just who, who cares? Just people who are trying to like move. Right. Right. Uh, like there, there is a lot to be said about consistency, like martial arts, you, you're a white belt and then you get it dirty and you're a black belt, you only get it dirty, <laughs> right? But it's true. Yeah. You, yeah. Only get it, you only get it dirty by wearing it over and over. Yes. Uh, and that's not really the way they, they do it, but that's, that that's kind of like the, the, the thought of it. Right. Um, you, 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 you suck at cooking the first time you do it and then, you know, you do it more and, yeah. and all of a sudden now you're the, my wife wasn't a great cook when she's a great cook now, but she wasn't a great cook when we met with that whole bottle of soy sauce. Um, as a tech, like, I think, you know, it's, it's this thing that techs, CNAs, MAs, um, quite often will, they're like, well, I'm just a fill in right. the blank, right? I'm just a entry level. And, uh, well, then the, 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 the nurses can't function without the, the CNAs in the nursing home, right? That's true. Like today, the nurses quite often don't know how to do genital hygiene, uh, don't know how to change a bed, yeah. you know, things like, right? Quite often, they, they can't do that level of care. They really depend on, on the CNA. Right. In dialysis, quite often, the nurses can't set up a machine. It's the dialysis tech. The dialysis tech does, right? So it's like you have a very special skill, even though it might be called entry. There's a very special skill that skill that the whole machine can't work without. And I think that there's really an opportunity to monetize that skill if you stay consistent, right? Okay, I know this person's going to come in and do this job. Take away that trivial nature of like, uh, I don't know if Paco's going to be able to do the job, right? Like I know this guy's been for the last twenty years. Or That's 10, what he's been doing. 10 years, yeah. Right. There's great opportunities there. Right. Then when it comes time to teach people, like you look at people like that, when it comes time to manage people, you look at people who have that, that, right. kind of, that consistency. Right. Um, we met with a person on, on musings, uh, a 
couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's in the financial services. And mm. like I've watched so many people enter the financial services industry. And I, I think the same thing about that too. It's like uh, you go in and you go in all hot and heavy. If you burn out, then you're, you're out, right? But if you just stay consistent, like I've seen so many of those people become rich. Um, and they're not necessarily the one who like kicked ass in the beginning. They're the one who showed up even though they weren't selling stuff. Yes. Showed up every week. And then now everybody around them just knows that that's what they do. Yep. And it, it plugs right in. I'm sure there's yeah. things that you've been doing for a long time that people just know that you do it, right? You just keep writing songs. You just keep, they're not all hits. Right. But they know that that's the guy who writes the songs. Yeah. Yeah. He consistently puts yeah. out. I don't know, if, is that content? Yeah. Is that called content? Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, even what we're doing with musings, right? You'd say, oh, it's Wednesday. Oh, it's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and kudos to you because I, <clears throat> when I'm going through my social media and I'm seeing our content, your content, and I know I did not have any finger on the button <laughs> and it's there. Mm. It's a nice feeling, huh? Yeah. Especially when it gets shared. Yeah. Right? Yep. So this this new thing that you're doing, the whole social media thing, you're actually doing um, social media management also, hosting a podcast. Mm. How has that shaped your mindset moving forward? Because this is a new tool in your, in your tool bag. Well, I mean... <clears throat> I, I I think about it as a so I I think there's like a line right or maybe kind of a place that it can get a little muddy because mm. I'm like everybody else where if I see some like oh somebody liked it like I probably have that whatever whatever they're I forgot what the chemical they're saying that dopamine get, the, yeah so that like yes I'm craving that I'm an <laughs> addict right so I'm I'm like everybody else there but. Um, so, so the, th the thing that excites me about this and, and that like, like I think you said about results driven, like I'm, yeah. I, I like dashboards. I like analytics. I like growth. I like quality improvement type of right. things, right? Like, okay, this is where we're at this. We want to do better. And, um, I think that's really something that's easy besides the dopamine, but to be able to look and like, okay, we're, we have more in our community um they're spending more time on this you know looking at this sort of content this is what the content is it's like sh yes. shit that can help them i'm like okay that makes me feel really really good when i see that people are watching something about you know um you're talking about life speeding up mm -hmm. you know at at 40 that you don't don't start saying that you know, uh, well, I'm yeah. 40, so I can't do this and I can't do that. And I remember you know, like Egan, right? Yeah. So Egan Inui. And it's like, well, that has nothing to do with dialysis. But if you're at 40 and you stop doing shit, then all of a sudden you're 45 and you're 60. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're doing dialysis. Yeah, you're 60 internally, you know. Uh, so th that's what th that's what's exciting me. That's what I like about this this new thing is like the thought that the you know going back 25 years even like okay hey john you know i'm gonna show you how to be a tech i'm gonna train one person i got i got an audience of one right and then and then go back 15 years and it's like opening the school and okay we have now an audience of 15 20 whatever it was in the class right and and we've got now a small community with museums and a couple, you know, about a couple hundred that are right. like subscribers, right? Um, okay, we got a classroom of 200. Um, and then when I look at that community, whether it's by design or by affinity, like it is people that are delivering care or getting the care that yes. like people that, for the most part, you know, yes. I would say a big chunk of them. And, uh, you know, I, I had a guy message me like two days ago. He was one of my first students. He was actually a guy I was in elementary school with. And uh, we ended up in construction early on together. Then when we opened the school, he ended up in the program. And uh, 
he was like, he said something along the lines. He probably watched one of the amusing episodes, uh-huh. and he said, uh, you know, empathy is like my something about empathy was his favorite part of his now yeah. fourteen year profession. That you know, he can sit there and talk to people and feels like he can understand what they're going through at a certain level. By the way, the guy is a uh, he was a pre diabetic. Wow. Uh, even when we were younger, so by now I'm guessing he probably progress although he looks thin so maybe not um although diabetes can doesn't always have the effect that we think right i thought if you're pre-diabetes you're scaring me again i thought if you're pre-diabetes you can eat diabetes you can go back to not being you can you but can. once you're diabetic once you're type 2 yeah there's no there's no going back yeah. yeah so uh yeah i mean i building that community is Again, maybe not the original intent. Like I just thought, like let's put out some content that's going to help people and, uh-huh. and also help the businesses yeah. that I um, that I that I either own or or have participation in operations. Um, but now it's really I think that there's a community being built. There's um, you know some shoulders to yeah. lean, to, to lean on. Some I, I've always been that type of person. Even when I was a kid, is like you know. What do you want to call it? Clicks or uh, yeah, like you, know, you have different. Yeah, you know we can call them all sort of different things, right? But yeah, we had our our you know we took care of each other, right? And yeah. uh, I I like the idea of a community that you know is not necessarily right here that can uh, support each other in different ways, whether it's you know sharing, whether it be uh, advising, whether it be just you know listening and yes, uh, being somebody that's like me too. Yeah, you know, I feel that way too, or I I experience the same thing, or you know, uh, I'm watching somebody else exactly experience it. So when when all these uh, when all these are said and done, it's time for you to have fun. Would you retire in the Philippines? Mm, I'm not sure yet. I I would say that uh, my trip there showed me that that's feasible from a financial at least today in today's economy Mm -hmm. like uh i could see having enough money at you know a certain point in my life to go live the rest of my life in the philippines and have more than more the time of your life yeah more than what i would need um and then also like you know the the thing that i got from there is how uh I could, li- you know, people could live in abundance, but still then provide a better life for people there, which I never really got until I went there of like, oh, why do some, you know, uh, why do we send stuff every month? <laughs> well, no shit. Like now I get it, you know, like, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like remitting, my, you know, remitting money to the Philippines. Not just money, but you know, stuff. Oh, like, so oh, the big you know, buy boxes. Hey, you don't yeah. want those anymore? Yeah. Like I'm going to send it to the it, Philippines. Like these sort of, like in, it's so easy to sit over here and like having not n- not knowing how important that is to just go like oh, why why do you got to do something every month or why do you, you know why do we have to contribute to that box or stuff like that and then like you go there and like holy shit um, so seeing friends of mine like that live in like uh, like Ayala, Ayala Alabang, Ayala, right? Alabang like, yeah and they have a whole ecosystem that's around them but, you know <laughs> they they got a house but they have a whole business that yeah of you know uh, 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 a maid and a uh, what do you call this driver uh, a cook yeah uh, um, security guard yeah so so it's like how many other people could you help in retiring with abundance right yes um, but at the same point like that's my first time being in I don't know if it's safe to to say this but uh, I'll say it because uh, my mother-in-law said it uh, in a third world country you know where the the dollar is very strong different right yeah um i haven't been anywhere else i've been to like mexico cancun and like tijuana but uh i I wouldn't retire there (laughs) i know that uh uh going to europe you know yeah i don't think the the money goes the same no the same distance but uh who knows ladies and gentlemen michael morales
We'll post the link in the description so that you can visit Musings with Morales. Also, post the link of Dialysis Education Services if you want to start your career in the healthcare industry. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for letting me over, man. This episode has been brought to you by Dialysis Education Services.